You're listening to FemFluence Radio, created for women desiring more influence and affluence and are looking for other women who want the same. I'm your host, Jennifer Kemp, but you can call me Jen. I'm a serial entrepreneur and founder who's built four multi-million dollar companies. I'm also a mom to three amazing humans and a wifey to the self-proclaimed slay at home dad. Whoa, (laughs) that makes me tired just saying out loud. On this show, we'll have the real BS-free conversations that every woman wants to have, but no one's talking about with the honesty we deserve. We'll chat on the intersection of too muchness and not enoughness, what aligned success looks and feels like, and what it takes to dismantle old systems, beliefs, and thinking that get in the way of what we really want. If you're an ambitious woman, Looking for a collective that will support you as you grow into the next level leader you and everyone else knows, likes, and trusts? Then stick around because you're already home and amongst friends. Now, let's go build longer tables together. Having the certainty and confidence you need to make the real conversations necessary with the right people in order to enroll those decision makers into your ideas, close sales, and create movements is the key to getting what you really want. And knowing your real audience and what they care about will save you so much time and money. It's practically priceless. So my question for you is, what would be possible for you if you knew how to read the minds of the people you want to influence? Well, here's something to note. People don't care about the messenger and they don't care about the message unless they know how the messenger and message supports getting what they want or how they can eliminate something that's bringing pain in their life. That's why it's so important to not just know what you learned in the last episode with me about brand archetypes, but you must learn what your audience desires or what your audience wants to avoid. Because here's what most people who teach how to build a personal and professional brand don't tell you. It's the archetype and the audience, which is our topic for today's episode, that's required to get rich and recognized. Now, your archetype influence mix, or AIM as I call it, and the audience you're attracting are the two sides of the coin that pays you. Check this out. There are 7.7 billion people in the world. And the truth is, did you know that you only need to influence 1,000 of those 7.7 billion people to gain what you want in the world? In Kevin Kelly's wildly popular essay, 1,000 True Fans, he posits that in order to make a million dollars, you only need 1,000 True Fans. He also says, quote, Now, here's the thing. The big corporations, the intermediates, the commercial producers are all under-equipped and ill-suited to connect with these thousand true fans. They are institutionally unable to find and deliver niche audiences and consumers. That means that the long tail is wide open to you, the creator. You'll have your one in a million true fans all to yourself. And the tools for connecting keep getting better, including the recent innovations in social media. It has never been easier to gather 1,000 true fans around a creator and never easier to keep them near, end quote. So this is exciting because on FemFluence Radio, again, my entire purpose here is to help you gain more affluence and influence because I believe when women get rich and recognized, they change the world. So for those of you who are either creating a side hustle or want to have more influence inside of a company, and especially if you're a founder or entrepreneur, if you can execute initiatives that serve these hungry microeconomies, you're better off from a financial, read affluence, point of view. Now in my master brand method, identifying and getting good at attracting your ideal clients is deep work. In fact, it's work that a lot of people avoid. But I know that you're a savvy woman listening in, so you're not going to half-ass this, right? Because doing audience work and building it out is definitely an exercise longer than a podcast episode. 
So instead, what I'm going to do is give you the critical components of reaching your ideal audience, aka those that will not just follow you, but either buy from you or inside of a company, listen to your ideas and ally with you to implement them. So first, let's discuss what the definition of an ideal audience is. First part of the definition is people who want your products, services, or have something to gain from your knowledge, skills, gifts, and talents. The second part that's important in defining your ideal audience is they have to have the authority to buy or promote you to others. Now, if these two things aren't in place, they're not your ideal audience. Instead, they're fans and followers, but don't miss out on them because they can help you find your ideal audience if you watch closely. So here's how to identify your audience. First, you want to get specific on the person you believe is your ideal client. Note, sometimes you'll find out you're wrong about your audience because you'll be out there and you'll find out those are not the people you were meant to serve, but you have to start somewhere. You have to basically make it up To begin with, my advice, go ahead and make him or her up right now. Write down both the demographics and psychographics of your ideal client and actually give him or her a name. The next thing you're going to want to do is some research and development on their desires and fears. So you can do things like focus groups and don't get it twisted. It doesn't have to be complex. You can literally ask, you know, 10 people who you believe basically might look like the ideal client you're looking for and ask them if they would give you some input based on some questions you ask. You can do surveys. You can do research via the Google. You can take previous experience and evaluate how it applies today. So there's a bunch of ways that you can do that market research. But the best idea is to get in the same room with your client, whether that be virtual or analog, and have a real conversation about what they're looking for. I dare you to have at least 40 of these conversations. You'll be thrilled at the return on investment that you get from these sessions. So it could be as simple as bringing them out to coffee or tea or, you know, offering them something in order for this conversation to occur. The next thing you want to do is experiment, test, and iterate your brand message over time and notice what your audience is aligning with. And when you notice what they're aligning with, beta test ideas and ask for people to try them out and take on projects that will show off your innovation and relevancy if you're inside of a company. Now, doing this process that I just laid out for you has cost me money. But what it cost me in being in action, I made a lot more by failing fast and learning my audience faster in the process. One of the things that I say is the faster you fail, the faster you get not to fail. So a real world example of this in my company is I wanted to have this product that I created that helped women launch their ideas faster to be as accessible as possible. And I wanted it to be so accessible that I charged $197 for it, which is typically way under the curriculum price of the programs that we offer. And again, my idea was, oh, you know, if I make the price point accessible, but still enough that people will take it seriously, this will work great. And here's the crazy thing. After we launched it a couple times, I was pretty disappointed in the results. And as I dug in and tried to understand what made this product and why my audience didn't resonate, I found out that my audience didn't grow from this product. So what I mean by that is it didn't matter up until that point whether I launched a product that cost $1,000 or $100. Basically, my true fans would buy it at any price point. So I realized that I need to look for an outside resource to find clients just like them. So instead, I consolidated my offers, added an in-person component, And now, instead of that product being a dud, I have it as part and integral to my signature programming and now have a multiple seven-figure product by itself as a result of doing and testing that number of times. So that's my point. I've done, you know, a lot of things to figure out how to get over, in this case, air quotes, 
my failure at selling the $197 product. Okay, and so I want you to have the same opportunity. And this episode, although short, will allow you some insights of your own to come to the surface so that you can figure out where your audience is and start to have a conversation with them. So let's get you head started on defining your ideal audience by answering these questions in the worksheet I give you in this episode. First question, what is your audience's mission? Remember, not yours, but their mission. Number two, how can you help them get their mission accomplished? So what are the things that you do to do that? Number three, what do they fear will happen if they don't accomplish their mission? And number four, what will happen for them if they do get their mission accomplished? Now, those are four questions that are integral to my entire audience psychology map that I offer inside of Master Brand. And this just scrapes the surface of what we need to dig into so that we assure we're set up well to position ourselves as the choice for our ideal audience. And since I'm on that mission to mentor a thousand women leaders this year to up their affluence and influence by building a powerful Master Brand, I want to invite you to explore taking this work to the next level. A few times a year, I open up my premier program, Master Brand, where I personally guide you to achieving the recognition, relevancy, and richness you're desiring. And if you know we belong together, then it might just be open when you hear this episode. I personally teach and guide each season's cohort, so don't miss it. Women who listen to Femfluence Radio get extra special props, so use this link to access your exclusive bonuses and a personal shout out from me. So you can go to masterbrand.me forward slash FF to get in on all the juicy bonuses and the results oriented curriculum that is not available anywhere else on the internet. So what's next? The funny thing about building a brand is many people start out wondering, what should my logo be? What colors should my website have? What kind of photos should I create? Now I can geek out on color and typography psychology all day long. And the next episode, we will do just that. We have a lot to learn about building iconic messaging and visuals into our brand. So make sure to listen in on the next episode to hear how you can land on the perfect look and feel for your personal brand. See you next time. Thanks for listening to Femfluence Radio. If you resonated with this episode, please leave us a review and let other women know about it. Remember, we're building longer tables here. Follow us on Instagram at femfluence underscore official to stay in the conversation and also visit femfluence.com to sign up and receive things I only give to our listeners and friends. I look forward to our next chat.